Katori Shinto Ryu. It's one of the oldest traditions of martial arts in Japan. Its battle strategies used by ancient samurai warriors have been passed down quietly for nearly 600 years. Many non-Japanese are flocking to this martial arts dojo. What are these disciples seeking? I wanted to be uh, a part of a martial art with a, a great history and uh, a powerful ethos. I feel like it has a very spiritual aspect to it. When, when I first uh, saw Otake Sensei's video, I was like, this is... This is the stuff, this is the most like wonderful thing I have ever seen before. Well, I said that he is, he, he's a, a great swordsman. I would say the greatest swordsman alive and uh, an amazing teacher. This gentleman is Risuke Otake. The 88-year-old communicates the ancient techniques and spirit of Katori Shinto Ryu. He is, without a doubt, a living legend. We explore the world of a real samurai in contemporary times and follow his international students. We reveal the mysterious essence of an art spanning 600 years. And we look at how the spirit is touching people across the globe. Narita is about 70 kilometers from central Tokyo. The Shinbukan Dojo, where the Grand Master Risuke Otake teaches, is located in a bucolic setting. It's the only place in the world that fully teaches Katori Shinto Ryu. The dojo is not easily accessed by public transportation. Yet, on training days, the disciples stream in. Of the more than 1,000 disciples, half are non-Japanese. Many have moved to Japan to train here. Johan Nordstrom hails from Sweden. Becoming a member five years ago, he's one of the younger disciples. When I started at Stockholm University, so when I was 18, and at the library I found one of uh, Otake Sensei's books. But just from looking at the pictures in that book, I felt that uh, there was a, a, a strength and a, a, almost a purity to the uh, a purity to the simplicity of the movements. Also, what was written in it, uh, the words of Otake Sensei, uh, really impressed me. Johan's hero, Risuke Otake. Still active today, he has honed his masterful techniques over 70 years. He entered the Katori Shinto Ryu at the age of 16. Influenced by his pre-World War II militarist education, 
He took up this school of martial arts to become a man who could die with honor. With an innate gift and extraordinary passion, he earned his teacher's approval as a master. Only in his thirties, he became the sole person entrusted to bestow the teachings in their entirety. Here in his fifties, we can catch a glimpse of Otake's intimidating art that allows no one near. Katori Shinto Ryu originated in the late 15th century. During a long period of warring, the samurai around the country faced near constant battles over territorial expansion. Johan is visiting the Katori Jingu Shrine, the birthplace of Katori Shinto Ryu. The guardian deity of martial arts from ancient mythology is enshrined here. The school is officially called Tenshin Shoden Katori Shinto Ryu, which means martial arts tradition conveyed from the guardian deity. The remains of its founder, Izasa Choisai Ienao, rest here. A former warrior, at age 60, he dedicated himself to worshipping daily to the guardian deity of Katori for 1,000 days. At the end of this period, it is said that he was given the secret by the guardian deity. Ienao's Katori Shinto Ryu is a comprehensive martial art form suited for actual combat. Training covers all weapons as well as efficient use of body in order to defeat the enemy. Besides the sword, there is halberd art. And spear art and staff art, so if the tip of the spear is broken, the staff can still be used. There is throwing blade art. And finally, the lightning fast sword drawing art called Yai. This, for example, is a counter attack when grabbed from behind. Strike the adversary between the legs with the end of the scabbard while removing the sword. Then stab the adversary standing behind you before immediately turning the sword on the enemy in front for a fatal blow. The effective battle strategies of Katori Shinto Ryu inspired many schools of martial arts. However, the true teaching of Master Choisai Ienao was that these techniques must never be used. He was a master with a sword who refused to go to battle. Here is a tale about Ienao, who lived to be over 100 years old. Katori Shinto Ryu ストーツでも
そういうと熊笹の上にござを一枚敷いてでその上にスッと乗って潰れないんですねそれを縫った文芸者はこれでもし取材したらとてもかなうものじゃないとそれをそれで参りましたとこれは本当に殺し合いの方ではあるけどもやってはいけないという奥ねそういう教えがあってやってはいけないんだとだから香取神道流日本の武道で一番古い流派でありながらただの一人も無念だって言って切られて死んだ人はいないんです。So, while the ultimate mastery of the killing technique is pursued, it is never to be practiced. Inheriting this belief, Otake prays alone every morning in the dojo to the guardian deity of martial arts. There are set ways for learning Kattori Shinto Ryu. All the disciples, including Johan, spend their training days patiently repeating the same basic kata or forms. When practice in front of the altar is over, everyone cleans and purifies the dojo. Johan is a scholarship student at graduate school. He's conducting research for his doctorate at the university's theater museum. He's long been devoted to Japanese culture. Currently, he's researching films from 80 years ago. Uh, of the time, this is 1934-35. And uh, articles about it. Here we have the famous uh, actress, uh, Takako Iria, uh, looking stunning as always. Uh, Here are the <coughs> three books. Uh, three old volumes of Otake Sensei's books uh, that was published back in the day. So the deity and the sword, Katori Shinturyu. And this was actually the, the first book that I saw. It would decide the fate of then 18-year-old Johan. The book was translated into English by a former U.S. Marine, the late Don Drager. After extensive research on all of Japan's martial art forms, he began writing books in English on the subject in the 1950s. These publications are still read by many around the world. Of all the martial arts, he was moved most by Katori Shinto Ryu, which had been passed down secretly. Becoming the first non-Japanese disciple, Drager proceeded to learn the elusive techniques from Otake. Of his master, he said, his skill exceeds human intelligence and is the most important martial technique asset in the world. Thanks to Drager, the number of non-Japanese admiring Disuke Otake grew and Otake eventually opened his doors to all who came knocking regardless of nationality, religion, or gender. Since its earliest days, Katori Shinto Ryu was always unique in that it accepted everyone. Monte is how many people have been in the world, but 
百姓長年まで惜しみましたから去る者は追わず訪ね来る者は拒まず教えてくださいというのははい来なさいで教えるやめていく人はもう少しやれってなって言わない自分の都合でやめていくんだからもうそのまま捨てておくとそういうやり方で600年こうして続いてきた All members are obliged to sign an ethics agreement. Though Katori Shinto Ryu turns no one away, these four articles must be obeyed to pledge absolute secrecy about matters of this art, to not discuss nor demonstrate martial techniques, to never engage in any kind of gambling or frequent disreputable places, to not cross swords with any followers of other martial traditions. Should any of these articles be broken, The signee will be punished by the deity of martial arts. The agreement is sealed in blood. Keeping this timeless oath, the training as a disciple continues for life. New members starting training sessions discover there is no special curriculum in place. When the dojo is open, they are free to come at any time. Those who leave are not mourned. Also means what you do or don't do is completely up to you. So how does the training proceed? South African Charles Lowe has been a member for nine years. He had dreamed of joining Katori Shinto Ryu when he learned about it as a teenager. He is more advanced than Johan, but in terms of training here, there's no difference. Day in and day out, he practices the same fundamental kata movements for years and years. I wanted to be taught by Otaki Sensei, who is the greatest swordsman in the world. One of the things that's really challenging about Shinto Ryu is the fact that yeah, you need to be very persistent and you need to be very disciplined. So it's important to keep on doing the basics properly, keep developing, keep growing. Um, and, and only by doing that, I think, can you actually develop and get better in Shinto Ryu. The discipline needed to accurately carry out the kata, passed down from generation to generation, is at the core of the training. There exist over 80 kata. A critical road to improvement is to meticulously watch the advanced members' kata and steal their movements. This is Otake's oldest son, Nobutoshi. And his second oldest, Shigetoshi. Tremendously skillful teachers. They will succeed their father. Within one kata, there are dozens of movements, but the reasons behind them are left unexplained. Juniors ask senior members for a one-on-one -on -one session and repeat the same movements of the kata over and over again until their bodies start to move automatically. Practice means repetition. Hey, what's up?
Observe. Copy. Attempt. Then observe again. The disciples question this repetition and find themselves running into walls. They think, I've done this for a year. Am I improving at all? But that is how you improve, by climbing over that wall again and again. They continue to question, but after several years, they come to naturally understand about 80%, 90% of the meaning behind the kata without having been told. Charles is the director of the rugby team at Dutsu Keizai University in Ibaraki Prefecture. Does he find similarities between the training of Katori Shinto Ryu and rugby practice? So defensively, we'll be working on trying to close down how the opponents are going to attack us on the weekend. On attack, what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve our uh, running course of the players. So what we'll do is we'll repeat those patterns over and over and over and over again so the players can gain a better understanding of what they need to do in a game situation. As a professional trainer, he's been highly influenced by the teaching style of Risuke Otake. In the beginning, I used to talk a lot more. Now, as a coach, I tend to demonstrate, talk very little bit, and then let the players do so they can gain experience and then make small corrections and give them feedback. So I've made a huge change to my coaching style. It is rare for Otake himself to do the actual teaching, yet he knows every disciple's habits and characteristics. For those who meet his expectations, a new road of training opens up. Mokudoku is a classified scroll given only to those approved by Otake after years of training. We were allowed to film just the opening section, which explains the genesis of Shinto Ryu. Those who are allowed to know what follows will be mastering a truly classified, undisclosed killing technique. For a New Year's ceremony, the disciples who will receive a Mokudoku scroll present a demonstration for their teachers. Standing by nervously is Johan. <coughs> Many
Matches are forbidden in Katori Shinto Ryu, and there are no dai or tears. Instead, receiving the scroll is proof of one's competence and character. Five years since becoming a member, Johan has advanced one little step in his training. Hints for becoming the bearer of a true killing sword are revealed in the scroll. We're lucky to get just a sense of the secret killing technique. Katori Shinto Ryu, a martial strategy from the Civil War era of the late 15th century, pursues how to accurately attack the vital areas of enemies in armor. Striking the torso in Katori Shinto Ryu means to get to this weak spot in the armor, to slash the string that attaches the flaps here, and the neck right here where it's open. And also here, where it's wide open, you cut right here. Attacking under the armpit and severing the artery. Underneath there are stitches. This is made of cloth for mobility. So you cut along here. The inner arm is another vital area. Critical veins run. Along our arms, run many veins, and if they're pierced even slightly, it's the same as being struck in the heart. In 20 seconds, you'll lose your sight. The highly mobile and functional Japanese armor has a few defenseless areas. To find them and kill with a single blow, that's the essence of Katori Shinto Ryu. This is the real meaning hidden in the kata, which members must repeat until memorized. There are hidden techniques using the body in each and every blow that cannot be seen at a glance. In kata, an exchange occurs with each person receiving the other's sword. However, with just a small change in angle, it becomes an attack on the opponent's vital areas. Here I'm already in. In actuality, already cutting the opponent as he comes for me. Here, striking the forearm. Hit here, or here. This is to symbolize that I've struck. This is when the opponent slips and falls. If I lunge with my right foot, he will strike me. So I go with my left. When your opponent is receiving an attack, it's a movement in which you've already beat him. So it's the repetition of he dies, he dies, he dies. Those techniques are hidden in the moves. So even if you were to watch and try to steal the moves, you couldn't. The true meaning behind kata, shielded even from the disciples, can only be understood in part when a student reaches a level to receive the scroll, the body moves quicker than the mind, a technique that quiets the enemy in a single moment. Only when the repetition of kata is understood deeply can one move up to the next rank of training. It's not a sport. There are rules in sports. In kendo, there's face, forearms, chest, thrust to the throat. 
But Shinto Ryu is not like that. As you've seen, here we attack the vital areas. That's something you can't make rules for. For this reason, our style cannot become a sport and remains a martial strategy. Unlike a martial art like Kendo with its rules, this is an accumulation of techniques, both tactical and practical, in actual fighting. Secrets are hidden in Iai, or the sword drawing art as well. It is the instantaneous dodging of the enemy's attack, quickly moving to a superior position, then delivering a forceful and accurate stroke in a mere fraction of a second. At 88 years old, Risuke Otake is still Katori Shinto Ryu's finest swordsman. As if an extension of breathing, his body moves automatically. There is no evidence of tension in his body, which has endured 70 years of intense training. When this level is reached, the swordsman is able to close in on his attacker without wasting a second, easily taking life. <laughs> My father has a few refined techniques. And if someone heedlessly tried to defeat him, I think it would prove difficult. One of the most trusted disciples of Risuke Otake is Daniel Lee. The Australian native has studied Katori Shinto Ryu for 20 years. He's now in charge of all the non-Japanese disciples. His mother is Australian, his father Chinese. He grew up in a rough town and, during a time when he suffered from bullying, took an interest in ancient Japanese martial arts. At around uh, the age of 10, uh, I started to, uh, to get exposed to, uh, to some kind of uh, bullying and uh, racism and, uh, and so on in uh, school in Australia. And one of the very first books that I found was uh, a book by Don Draeger uh, that introduced the art of Katori Shinto Ryu and also featured my now teacher, Otake Risuke Sensei. In pursuit of a strength that could conquer discrimination, Daniel has been deeply committed to training. Every morning, he rises with the sun and, like Risuke Otake, prays to the founder and guardian deity of Katori Shrine.
At a neighborhood park, he carries out a one-man practice session with a tree as his opponent. Is it the enemy his eyes see, or his own weaknesses? Every day for two hours, he stands face to face with the tree, free from thought. When he returns from practice, his family is just rising. His wife is Japanese. Before their son was born, she used to accompany Daniel to the dojo at his suggestion. Daniel knocked on the door of Katori Shinto Ryu solely in pursuit of strength. But the long years of training have brought recognizable change to his inner self. I haven't had, had this sense of, uh, of yoyu in, uh, in my movement. And yoyu means a kind of a, uh, kind of a leeway. So rather than constantly rushing uh, through, uh, through the, uh, the practice, being able to, to realize where there's, there's uh, points to, to poise for a moment or where it's important to, to remain still rather than, um, than in motion. So from that perspective, I think that um, on a physical level that, uh, that I'm slowly learning how to embody that. Don't forget your school bag. Here you go, mate. After sending his wife and son off for the day, his own work day begins. He is a translator. He has recently chosen to work freelance, another decision toward a less rushed lifestyle. Currently, he's pouring his energy into the translation of this book entitled Heho. The author is Risuke Otake. Both sets of kanji characters are read Heho. This version means tactical theory or martial technique. But in Katori Shinto Ryu, different characters are used. This one means the way of creating peace. ま、まず兄弟愛親の孝行。そういうことをできて初めてこの寸通りの技戦いというものはこれはやるものではない戦いというものはしてはならないと。そういう流派を私ども the deeper Daniel researches Heiho, the more questions arise. He sits down with Otake to ask about a few points. What has passed down in Katori Shinto Ryu is not just the art of the fight. 
the art of medicine, architecture, and even prayer for the avoidance of human calamities is imparted. He creates a talisman to expel the curse of disease. Heho is the teaching to protect one's family and neighbors. Daniel is pursuing this. Now you can't eat cameras. You can't eat cameras. <laughs> I've received a lot of support and understanding from my wife. I keep that in mind while training at the dojo. work, family, and my own interests. I hope to continue finding the balance between those things. To have not just work, but also Katori Shintoryu. I think he's happiest that way. It's spring at Katorijin. The dojo's disciples from around the world have gathered for a ritual. This rite, held at Katori Jingu, takes place only once every 12 years. The disciples of Katori, Shinto Ryu, are participating in a parade. For the disciples who train silently, day in and day out, this is a rare moment out in the sun. People warmly greet these local heroes. <laughs> By mastering the techniques to kill, the ability to give vitality to life presents itself. The kindness in the eyes of the teachers away from the dojo shows the true quality of Katori Shinto Ryu which has captured the hearts of disciples from around the world. <laughs> the festival is over. And the sounds from the dojo echo again through the fields of Narita. The disciples' training journey knows no end. For me, Shinto Ryu is a lifetime pursuit, uh, so I hope to be able to continue this for uh, uh, this practice and, uh, and training for a very, very long time. Um, naturally, I hope, therefore, I hope to be uh, living in Japan for at least the foreseeable future. Shintori is an integral part of my life. Um, just like my family is very important, my work is very important, Shintori is very important. So I think it's really, really in integral in making me a better person, um, improving my character, strengthening my willpower. Shinto Ryu is not just a, a martial arts tradition. This is a 600-year-old 
cultural tradition, and one of those uh, the uh, the uh, tasks that we have is ensuring that Sensei's message reaches all of his uh, uh, students overseas. So, so I hope to be able to, to make some uh, some contribution to uh, to assisting uh, my teacher in that regard. ヨンジュンの際から門弟を取り始めそれで今これだけの門弟1500人くらいおりますかそうしたら751名外国で世界 あの、広めた正義ではないかとそう思っております。決して私の力ではありません。よ。よ。よ。